Today, I'm going to learn you something super interesting about CSS grids. Because did you know that you're able to change the layout of CSS grid and then animate that change? CSS can absolutely do that. And by animating this grid layout change, you can, for example, create these expandable sidebar layouts simply by just changing the grid layout. But in today's video, we will actually be taking it one step further and we will combine it with the CSS has pseudo selector, which is now supported in all major browsers. And with that, we will be recreating this almost carousel-like animation that you see on the unfold.co website. So that means that I went ahead and created a very simple version of this carousel. And that is what we'll be recreating today. Let's dive in. Like always, we start by taking a look at the starting point of our code. What you see is that I already added some basic styling for all of the different elements, but they're not put next to each other yet. And of course, they also don't animate. Looking at the HTML, you see that I created a slide component. And in that slide component, there is a diff that has an image plus a link and nothing else. If we jump into the CSS, you see that we have a container class, which has a black background and a border radius, and simply make sure that everything has a max width. And then we have the slide component the slide component also has a different kind of background color and is already using CSS grid to position both the image as well as the anchor over top of each other. And both of them also have a little bit of styling, for example, a border radius for the image and of course a white background and the black text for the button. But of course, all these things don't do anything for the animation. So I already went ahead and added that in there. The first thing to make that grid animate is first putting all of the slides next to each other. For this, we need to go to our container element, which is the container that wraps all of our slides. And maybe we could even rename it to slider container just to make it a little bit more clear that it is for the slider and not the random page container. And if we do that, you can also see that it already is display grid. By default, display grid has only one column. That is why you see that everything is currently on its own row. The first step towards putting all these images on a single row is by defining our custom grid template columns. This grid template columns, like the name already implies, defines a template for the columns. In here, you can, for example, use a repeat function where you say three because we have three slides and then you add one fraction. This one fraction that we now repeat three times, which is actually the same as one FR, one FR, one FR, that's the same thing. This now tells the browser that these three elements should be divided equally over the available space. So if we now go back, you notice we have three columns. However, that doesn't match the layout that we were trying to replicate. What we could do to change this is instead of using one FR three times, we could change it to four FR for the very first item, meaning that it takes up four times the amount of the second and third slides. And if you do that, you see that the first slide is indeed a lot wider. Next, we can also, because we're using CSS grid, we can use the gap property of, for example, 0.5 REM, which then gives a little bit of white space in between the slides. And while we're at it, I'm also gonna hide the button for now because this looks a little bit ugly. So we go to the anchor and in there, we're gonna say transform scale zero, as well as I'm also gonna make it opacity zero because this way in a second, we can let it scale in as well as fade in. At least now we don't see any buttons. Now the question is, how can we make this grid template change its layout when you hover any of the children? And for that, we need the CSS has selector. Let's see how that works. Let's say we create a selector slider container and then we're gonna say colon has dot slide and then we take the nth child to colon hover. What this now says is our slider container needs to have a child, which is a slide class and that is the second child. So in this case, the second slide that is hovered. And if this is true, if this element is present within the slider container, we can set a style on the slider container. We could, for example, set background red, because if you then would hover the second slide, the whole background of the carousel should become red. And that's true, but it doesn't do so for the third or for the first item. So we can change something in the parent depending on what's happening in one of the children. You could, for example, also check if it has a specific class or anything like that. And if we can change the background color, we can, of course, also change the grid template columns. We could simply make the second child 4FR instead of the first child. And by doing that and going back and then hovering the second child, 
you will see that all of a sudden it expands. And if we move the cursor off of it again, it simply goes back to the first version because that's the default style. And then we can, of course, copy this also for the third item. And then you can simply hover these items and they will just expand. Of course, you already noticed that if we now jump to the second one, it goes to the very first item. And that is because there is a gap in between these items. So we're for a slight second, we aren't hovering any item, meaning that the very first item will open again because that's our default. The way we can fix that is by not using a gap in our grid. So instead of using a gap on the container, we're actually gonna go to our slider and we're gonna say padding zero and then 0 0.5 REM. This way you see that we added the gap as part of our slide element because it's simply padding, but it looks visually the same, although the gap became twice as large because we have now padding on both of the different elements. But to prove you my point, if I now move the cursor to the right, it will just show the auto slide and it won't go to the very first anymore until we, for example, from the second slide, move off. If we change it to 0.25, then the gap will be the same as before. And our question is, how can we animate this? Well, that's not super hard because it's an animatable property in CSS. We can simply go to our container and then say transition and grid template columns, for example, 800 milliseconds. And then we add a very nice easing in there. We save that. And now if we would hover any of these items, you see that all of a sudden we already have a beautiful looking slider and all these columns are simply animating. It's literally as easy as that to animate a CSS grid template. And this is pretty much the essence of the video, but I of course want to take it a little bit further by also animating in this button because, well, right now it's just an image carousel, I guess, which could also be fun, but let's add in that button. At the bottom, we can say slide hover anchor, and then we can, like Copilot is already suggesting, simply change the scale as well as the opacity of our button. The other important thing though, is that we also add a transition, where we can say transition 300 milliseconds, and we also add a nice easing again, and we say transition property is transform comma opacity. And then you'll see that if we hover, that the button nicely appears. And maybe we can even add a small delay so it isn't moving that far to the right if the element is still scaling. So we can say transition a delay is 200 milliseconds. And we only add this to the hover variant because if you move your cursor off of it, we want it to immediately fade out. But if you hover it, we want there to be a very small delay because now if you open it, I think it looks just a little bit better. The only thing that's now still the case is that for the very first item, there also should be a button if you're not hovering. And you know what? We can also use the CSS has selector here. We can add another selector where we say dot slide nth child one. So we select the very first slide and then you could say it has, and then we use the tilde to say any of its direct siblings, that should be a dot slide that's hovered and now you have a selector that says, if the first child has any child that is hovered, apply this style. But we actually want to have the exact inverse. We want to say, if it does not have a slide that's hovered, so if there's not any other slide, meaning we can use the not selector to chain this, where we can say now, if it does not have this, then we're gonna apply the following and we're actually gonna apply it to the anchor even where you're then gonna say scale one as well as opacity one just like we did with the other anchor and to recap one more time we're selecting the very first slide then in here we're checking if it has a sibling that is hovered and then we're negating that by saying it should not have it and finally targeting the anchor within this element if we then go back you see that the very first element already has its button visible. But if we go to the second, it just goes away. And if we now move our cursor off, the very first item shows it again. And of course, instead of hovering, you could also add some click behavior and for example, create a dot active class that you simply render on the active element. Because that way you could click the second element and even if you move your cursor off, it would stay open instead of moving back to the very first item again. One other thing I also think is super important to add here is a little bit of accessibility. And we can do that by also checking if there is focus within this specific child. If there is focus, it should also show the current slide. And actually that's still super simple to do with CSS as well. 
because within a has selector, you're able to check for multiple things. So we could copy this selector, add a comma, and then instead of hover, we could say focus within. So now we're checking whether there's focus on an element that is inside this slide element. In this case, the anchor, for example. We can do the same thing for this slide. And then we also need to go to our default because we should also say that it shouldn't have focus. Otherwise, the very first button will always be visible if there is focus on any other element. Oh, and of course, we still need to change this hover to also check for focus within. So the button will also show in that case. And then if you go back, you will notice that the hover should still work, which it indeed does. But if I then start to use my tap, then also the correct item will open. And of course, you should also add a focus state to this button probably to make it more apparent that there is some focus. But if you do that, I think you made a very beautiful carousel by using CSS only and combining some of the super modern CSS techniques. Like always, you'll find the source code linked down below in the description as well, where you can just copy paste it and play around with it yourself. Try, for example, to also add the text like you can also see in Unfold's website and make sure to share that with me as well. I hope you enjoyed today's video. Thanks so much for watching and I will see you in the next video.